G'day. That famous English puzzler, uh, Henry Ernest Dudney, produced hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of puzzles, and this is my reproduction of one of them. He challenges the reader to visit, to start from A and visit each of these towns, represented by a circle, just once, and end at Z, or Z if you're American. That was the challenge. Now, he, I, I've changed the wording slightly, and I'm going to talk about that because Dudney was a puzzler with a sense of humour and mischief, and his puzzle has a twist, as it often did. But first I want to look at the puzzle in a uh, mathematical way to realise why apparently it's unsolvable, because I think if you try visiting these you will find very quickly that you can't visit all the squares properly. You can try it over and over again. So let's analyse it mathematically first and then look at the twist that Dudney added. Now, to analyse it, we have to realise, first of all, that he's already been a bit mischievous and he's simply taken an array of circles, a rectangular array of circles, and pushed them out of position a bit. I think if you look carefully, you can see there are really four towns across the top and four could easily be put in a row next and these four and these four and so forth. He's just pushed and nudged them a little bit. So if we straighten them up, we would have four towns across the top and he's got two, four, six rows of them. So we could equally well have represented his array like this. Two, four, six rows and four columns. Starting at A and then, as I said, at Z or Z. Now, mathematically, we could try to analyse moving from town to town uh, in a variety of ways, but perhaps the, the simplest one is to use a mathematical concept which I referred to in a previous video about puzzles called parity. Now parity is when we look at black and white, zero and one, yes or no, uh, are two options to analyse a problem. And here we have a case where we could use the concept of a chessboard, which I'm going to lay over the top of this. So here are my columns and my rows, and I will change colour, I might use red, to shade in the squares. So you can do this quite rapidly. Uh, I don't think this will take an undue amount of time. But I intend this to look a little bit like a chessboard. And suddenly the problem becomes very, very much more easy to solve, or at least to analyse. Because you realise that if we start here at A, our very first town, if we're only allowed to travel on these paths, that is across or down, is going to be in a blank square. So let's look. First will be blank. Then, Whichever blank square we're in, our next move, if we're only allowed to move sideways or up and down, must be a coloured one or a shaded one. So let's put second, second move, shaded. And let's say we end up on this shaded one. Our next move must be to a blank. So our third move would be blank. And then, it doesn't really matter which one. If you end up on a blank one, the next one must be shaded. So you can see that by overlaying a chessboard and understanding the concept of parity, as we move from town to town to town, we're going blank, shaded, blank, shaded, blank, shaded, blank, shaded. And I think you don't have to analyse this very much to realise that the odd ones are blank and the even ones are shaded, at least when we start off this way. 
So, how does that influence our understanding of the problem? Well, if we start at A and visit the other 23 towns once each, that means we've got to visit 23 towns. And 23, I don't need to tell you, is an odd number. So therefore, just like these odd numbers, it means our 23rd town is going to be blank. It has to be. But Z is not blank, it's shaded. So Z cannot be our 23rd, 23rd town. It's impossible to solve in that form. So if you start at A and go down and continue across and continue around, you will not get to Z on your 23rd move. Therefore, you can't visit every 23 towns exactly once each. So there we go. We've proved it's impossible. So what was the twist that Dudney had in his puzzle? It was his choice of words. He didn't say that you could visit each town once or even pass through each town once. I'll just change colours here. He used this terminology. He said... Enter each town once. He was a great one in many of his puzzles for playing games with words. Now, this is what he argues. If you started on town A, then you haven't yet entered it. If you lived there your whole life, I suppose technically when you were born you might have, but in the sense of coming from outside a town in? No. So he said, if you, for example, visit this town, that's your first blank, and go back into this one, you have entered that first town, and then continue your journey. Now, in this case, you realise this is still true, but he's now visiting not 23 towns, but he's, vi he's entering all 24. This one, and going back to that one, and if he's entering 24, because 24 is even, like these even ones, you can end on a shaded one. And of course, uh, this means that it is entirely possible and thus you can solve Dudney's problem. But you've got two puzzles for the price of one here. The first one is an apparent impossibility which we've been, been able to understand through the mathematical concept of parity and the chessboard, which I hope you enjoyed. And the second one is this little twist that uh, Henry Ernest Dudney put into the puzzle just to make it possible uh, because of a play on words. I hope you've enjoyed that. Please look out for future puzzles and, of course, click the like button and leave your comment. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to find out about future videos. Thank you very much for watching.